the story. Her eyes moved to the chair over which she had thrown some of her clothes. She had thrown some of her clothes. A petticoat string dangled to the floor. One boot stood upright, its limb upper fallen down. The fellow of it lay upon its side. He wondered at his riot of emotions of an hour before. From what had it proceeded? From his own supper? From his own foolish speech? From the wine and dancing, the merrymaking, and saying good night in the hall? The pleasure of the walk along the river in the snow? Poor Aunt Julia. She too would soon be a shade, with the shade of Patrick Morecambe and his horse. He had caught that haggard look upon her face for a moment when she was singing Array for the Bridal. Soon, perhaps, he would be sitting in the same drawing room, dressed in black, his silk hat on his knees. The blinds would be drawn down and Aunt Kate would be sitting beside him, crying and blowing her nose and telling him how Julia had died. He would cast about in his mind for some words that might console her and would find only lame and useless ones. Yes, yes, that would happen very soon. The air of the room chilled his shoulders. He stretched himself cautiously along under the sheets and lay down beside his wife. One by one, they were all becoming shades. Better pass boldly into that other world in the full glory of some passion than fade and wither dismally with age. He thought of how she who lay beside him had locked in her heart for so many years the image of her lover's eyes when he had told her that he did not wish to live. Generous tears filled Gabriel's eyes. He had never felt like that himself toward any woman, but he knew that such a feeling must be love. The tears gathered more thickly in his eyes, and in the partial darkness he imagined he saw the form of a young man standing under a dripping tree. Other forms were near. His soul had approached that region where dwell the vast horde hosts of the dead. He was conscious of but could not apprehend their wayward and flickering existence. His own identity was fading out into a grey, impalpable world, the solid world itself, which these dead had one time reared and lived in, was dissolving and dwindling. A few light taps upon the pane made him turn toward the window. It had begun to snow again. He watched deeply, sleepily, the flakes, silver and dark, falling obliquely against the lamplight. The time had come for him to set out for the journey westward. Yes, the newspapers were right. Snow was general all over Ireland. It was falling on every part of the dark central plain, on the treeless hills, falling softly upon the bog of Allen, and farther westward, softly falling into the dark, mutinous Shannon waves. It was falling, too, upon every part of the lonely churchyard on the hill where Michael Fury lay buried. It lay thickly drifted on the crooked crosses and headstones, on the spears of the little gate, on the barren thorns. His soul swooned slowly as he heard the snow falling faintly through the universe and faintly falling like the descent of their last end.